Hello, clever people, and welcome to my review for Call Me By Your Name. So Call Me By Your Name is based on a novel of the same name, a very well-reviewed novel, and it comes to us from director Luca Guadagnino, who has done films such as A Bigger Splash and I Am Love in the past, and it follows the story of this young boy who is discovering his sexuality over a summertime through a man that his dad invited. Essentially, his dad owns this very nice, luxurious place in France, I, no, Italy is where it is, and every summer he invites somebody, somebody that, you know, admires him because he is a writer, to come up and help study with him and help come up with new ideas, and by inviting this guy up, the him and the guy's son start to make a bondage, and soon it starts leading them down paths that they never really saw coming, and Call Me By Your Name has been one of my most anticipated films for longer, so, so, so long, I think it's almost been a year at this point that it premiered at Sundance. I think it was the 19th, and right away, everybody was raving about it. Everyone was saying that it was just amazing, and because of that, I was excited for it, and the more and more time went by, the more and more people saw it, the more and more love it got. And soon, it was just kind of overwhelming how many people were calling it well, like one of the best films ever made, and so many people had so much admiration for it, and I've just, I've been excited for it for a really long time, and I can say that this film exceeded my expectations. I it, it did something different than my expectations could have ever, ever seen coming. It's just, this is such a pure and natural film that I, I can't really find words to describe. Honestly, words are inept in comparison to this movie. There's just, there's nothing you can really compare it to. It's its own thing. It's its own separate entity. It's like its own universe. I mentioned earlier this year in my Dunkirk review that Dunkirk, that it occasionally didn't do so successfully, but occasionally did very, very well, was that it tried to extend past the boundaries of just purely being an experience and tried to become sort of somewhat of a separate reality where you weren't just wrapped into the movie, but you were engrossed in the movie and all five of your senses were feeling what the five people in the film were feeling at that current moment. And Dunkirk, if it had established setting a little better, I think that it would have achieved all of those because, and just, you know, films like that throughout film history have been incredible. You've had films like The Godfather that have done that. You've had films like Decalogue that have done that, A Brighter Summer Day. And I can say that Call Me By Your Name is added to those ranks. The film just focuses purely on atmosphere. From scene one, one, it's just such a natural movie. It just starts simply. It doesn't have a clear place where it starts. It starts when the guy comes to their house, but it doesn't really feel like a movie opening. It's just an opening. It's just something that starts. And then it continues to exist for the next two hours and 15 minutes, and then it ends. And the film is so incredible at feeling as realistic as possible, not just through the dialogue, but through the structure and just the sentimental and beautiful vibe that the film gives off. This is the strongest atmosphere I've seen in a film this decade and possibly of all time. It's just absolutely insane what they were able to do. And of course you have to talk about the tragedy in this film. It's it's a depressing movie and it's it's not necessarily depressing until the last little bit of the movie and the, the final shot is the type of final shot that stays with you forever. It never leaves you. I when I saw it, I started I started hyperventilating basically. I wasn't necessarily crying. I was just so overwhelmed by emotion at that point that I just I started hyperventilating and I started feeling so much sadness. And the rest of the film had done something so similar to that where it was just constantly I was overwhelmed with emotions and I didn't know how to feel. It was it was insane and bombastic and I just I fell in love with the film every single second that went by. Every single frame was just so beautiful the shots, they were like paintings, they were just beautifully green. The acting is so phenomenal, it's it's outstanding. I can't believe Timothy Chalamet isn't going to win Best Lead Actor for this. When You know, Gary Oldman's great, but Timothy Chalamet just does something so natural with it, and so does the director. And this film won't win Best Picture, unfortunately, but I really wish that it would.
would because it absolutely deserves it. This is honestly, without hyperbole, this is one of the best films I've ever seen. And I have a, I have a list of my top, I think, a hundred something films of all time. And after seeing it, I put this at number 12. That is not an over exaggeration. This film is honestly that beautiful. I, I'm, my words aren't doing it justice. I'm not explaining well enough what this movie does to you. It just, it has you live in a separate reality. Every time you hear Mystery of Love or Visions of Gideon, two incredible original songs that, again, will not win Oscars, but definitely should, both of them just heartbreaking. And when you listen to them again, you're transported back to Northern Italy. You feel the senses of Call Me By Your Name. You, you, you smell Call Me By Your Name. All of your senses are ignited by the film. There's so, it's just such a rich movie that is, it's overwhelming. I could talk about it for hours and hours, and the reason I'm not going into any detail story-wise is because I, this is the type of movie that you want to go in completely fresh, knowing hardly anything about it. And I just, I want all of my viewers who have not seen it yet to go in with that same experience, because that is the ultimate way to view this movie. Hardly knowing anything and going in and just having each scene floor you over and over again, especially the scene with Michael Stolbarg, which was honestly the best scene in this entire year, and I don't think that there's any arguing that. That was such a beautiful scene that kind of made the movie. The movie was already insanely incredible, but that made the movie, and then also the ending. But just everything about it, you should be able to witness it for the first time and just feel blessed that something like this exists, that something like this was made. This is honestly one of the best films ever made. I can't wait to continue to keep on watching this movie until I'm fatigued of it. The moment the Blu-ray comes out, I'm buying it, and I'm going to watch it again. And I'll probably try to see it again in theaters while it's still out. And I'll try to see it as many times as I possibly can, because I want to be able to love this film on the highest level I possibly can. And honestly, my love for it is already just exponential. This film is absolutely incredible. And please, if you have not seen it, go support it and go check it out. It'll be worth any distance you have to drive. It is amazing. I will give Call Me By Your Name a 9.75 out of 10. This really was one of the greatest films ever. I, I, I can see it years from now, people looking back on it and analyzing it and talking about it still. It's, it's the type of film that doesn't come around in theaters like very often, maybe once or twice a decade, and this is an example of it. You need to go out and see this movie, and you need to support it, because if we don't support films like these, these they won't get made. And everybody needs to see this. Everybody needs to witness this at least once, because even though it's heartbreaking, and even though it'll make you depressed, it is just such a vivid experience that everyone should have the pleasure of seeing. Well, anyway, that concludes my review for Call Me By Your Name. What are your thoughts on this film? Or what are you excited to see the film? Comment in the comment section below and let me know. I'm Robert Burke, and this has been The Clever Critics. Goodbye.